you to our Savior's worship today. If you're new, we're glad that you have joined us today. And for those of you who worship with us regularly, thank you for joining us again. Let us begin with a word of prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for your presence with us as we worship. Help us to know your presence as we pray, sing, and hear your word, read and preach, read and preached, that we may grow in our faith. Amen. We believe the chance to forget, uh, confess our sins and receive forgiveness in Jesus' name is important in our uh, lives as Christians, and so we're going to take that opportunity now. Let us pray. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us take a moment to offer up our confessions of sin to the Lord, and then we'll confess corporately, although I will uh, share the words on behalf of all of us. Let us confess. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. reading today is from the Old Testament. It's from the book of 2 Kings, chapter 5. Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Aram, was a great man in, and in high favor with his master, because by him the Lord had given victory to Aram. The man, though a mighty warrior, suffered from leprosy. Now the Arameans on one of their raids had taken a young girl captive from the land of Israel, and she served Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, If only my lord were, here, were with the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. So Naaman went in and told his lord just what the girl from the land of Israel had said. And the king of Aram said, Go then, and I will send along a letter to the king of Israel. He, Naaman, went, taking with him ten talents of silver, 6,000 shekels of gold, and 10 sets of garments. He brought the letter to the king of Israel, which read, When this letter reaches you, know that I have sent to you my servant Naaman, that you may cure him of leprosy. 
When the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his clothes and said, Am I God to give death or life? That this man sends word to me to cure a man of his leprosy? Just look and see how he is trying to pick a quarrel with me. But when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes, he sent a message to the king. Why have you torn your clothes? Let him come to me, that he may learn that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and chariots and halted at the entrance of Elisha's house. Elisha sent a messenger to him, saying, Go, wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh shall be restored, and you shall be clean. But Naaman became angry and went away, saying, I thought that for me he would surely come out and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and would wave his hand over the spot and cure the leprosy. Are not Abana and Farpar the rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? He churned and went away in a rage. But his servants approached and said to him, Father, if the prophet had commanded you to do something difficult, would you not have done it? How much more when all he said to you was, Wash and be clean. So he, Naaman, went down and immersed himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the word of the man of God. His flesh was restored like the flesh of a young boy, and he was clean. The word of the Lord. Our gospel today is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10. After this, the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I'm sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, Peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, go out into its streets and say, Even the dust of your town that clings to our feet, we wipe off and protest against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God has come near. Whoever listens to you listens to me, and whoever rejects you rejects me, and whoever rejects me rejects the one who sent me. The seventy returned with joy, saying, Lord, in your name even this demon submitted to us. He said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. See, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this, that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. I invite you to pray with me. Dear Lord, I ask that you bring your word and you bring it into our lives. Bring it into our hearts that we may ponder upon it and wrestle with it and then grow in it, that in our words and our actions, your good news, that the kingdom is here, may be shared in our lives and in the world. Amen. God's kingdom is right on your doorstep. This is a paraphrase of the message that Jesus wants his followers to share in the towns and countryside into which he is about to travel. These 70 followers are given the mission of preparing the people for the arrival of Jesus and his good news message of God's love for his people. 
You see, Jesus wants to get word out that he will soon be arriving in their area. And so, in a sense, these 70 followers are sent out on a marketing campaign. They were to let people know that God's kingdom and the person of Jesus was coming soon. I bet you've never thought of Jesus as a marketing executive before, have you? Well, I hadn't either. But not only is Jesus acting out the part of an ad exec, he's also kind of playing out the role in the Mission Impossible TV show and the later movies of the tape message that set out the parameters and impossibility of the assigned mission for whichever agent that could be, Tom Cruise or whoever. I say this because as you hear Jesus' instructions to his followers for how to undertake the given message, it seems as if he's putting as many obstacles in their way as possible. Obviously, their mission will take a number of days, and yet Jesus says, do not take a coin purse or bag or extra sandals, and do not greet anyone on the road. Now, in the biblical paraphrase, the message, it reads, travel light, comb and toothbrush and no extra baggage. That kind of sums it up. All of this immediately after these words of warning. On your way, but be careful. This is dangerous work. You're like lambs in the midst of a wolf pack. At this point, we need to stop and ask the question, what is Jesus truly seeking to accomplish with this mission for his followers? Like most things that Jesus did and said, I think this mission work has multiple layers to it. Basically, as I said before, Jesus is sending the 70 out to do public relations work for his coming visits in the region. But this mission journey is about more than simply spreading the good news of the kingdom. It's also for the disciples about learning obedience and living in faith. Jesus wants his followers to learn to follow instructions, to be obedient to what he asks, for then things go the way they should. To understand this better, look back at the story of Naaman and Elisha that I just read for us today. Naaman wants to be cured of his leprosy, but gets mad when Elisha sends out the simple instructions to go wash in the Jordan seven times and your flesh shall be restored and you shall be clean. Why does he get angry? Well, Naaman is upset because he wants to be cleansed in some magical way or of instructions that require a hero's quest to achieve. He does not want to simply be obedient. It takes his obedient servants to point out the easy course in front of him, instructions that he finally follows, and by them, God makes him whole. Jesus is teaching the 70 the same lesson. Listen and be obedient to God. God's will is then more easily accomplished. When Jesus' followers obediently hit the roads and declared themselves as followers of Jesus, then even the demons cried out in recognition of the Lord's name and were cast out of their victims by Jesus' disciples. The Gospel of Luke reads, The seventy returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. And the message reads, The seventy came back triumphant. Master, even the demons dance to your tune. What his followers discovered through this experience was that action flowed from their obedience to and faith in Jesus. Through the giving of this hard mission, what Jesus was forcing the disciples to do was to obey him and trust in him for all their needs. By not allowing them to take any provisions or even extra clothes, they had to have faith that by coming in peace in Jesus' name and throwing themselves upon the mercy of those who would accept them, all their physical needs would be provided for them. And their obedience paid off. And as we've read, in their obedience to Jesus, they were given spiritual power, the evidence of which we see in their triumphant encounters with the spiritual forces of the world. Jesus' name spoken in obedience and faith was all the power they needed. 
And so a mission that seemed to be akin to a mission impossible was not only possible, but successful because of the 70s faith in Jesus and obedience to what he was asking of them. Thus we see that what Jesus was seeking from the 70 was that they go out into the world depending upon him, and when they did, they made a difference in people's lives. They were not simply telling the people about Jesus' imminent arrival, but in a way, they themselves were the arrival of God's kingdom to these people and communities, weren't they? For as we read upon the disciples' return to Jesus, we understand that as they went out with Jesus' message, in Jesus' name, they went with Jesus' spirit and love, and people's lives were changed. How all of this relates to you and me in this age is actually very close to what was asked of the 70 followers that Jesus sent out like lambs among the wolves. Life as a follower of Jesus is still dangerous in our day and age. There are many who will not accept our offer of peace. There are many who do not want to hear the name of Jesus, except as a swear word or expletive. And yet, as the disciples discovered, there are just as many who will accept our offer of peace and our stories of how our faith in Jesus has changed our lives. For you see, we are being called into mission, into a journey of faith and sharing. As Jesus says right at the beginning of today's reading, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. We are called to be obedient to Jesus we are called to step forward and to depend upon Jesus for all that we need. We are called to be workers for the kingdom of God. We are called to be God's kingdom by sharing God's peace and the love of Jesus with those whom we live in this world. We need to seek to share the love, the forgiveness, and the hope that we know with people in all aspects of our lives. Our faith is not our own, but rather something to be cast out upon the fields of the earth as the farmer sows seed. Paul wrote in Galatians, So let us not grow weary in doing what is right, for we will reap at harvest time if we do not give up. So then, wherever we have an opportunity, let us work for the good of all, and especially for those of the family of faith. Like the disciples discovered in their mission journey, as they obediently walked the road in faith, trusting that all would be provided, from the opportunities to share to the very words to speak, they not only announced the coming kingdom of God, but they brought it with them in the name of Jesus. So go and obediently be God's kingdom in the world and watch out great things will happen. Amen.
Let us confess our faith together with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. O Lord God, on this July 4th weekend, we give you thanks for our nation. We thank you for the freedom that we have to live our Christian lives in this nation, the freedom to worship and believe in you independent of our government and without restrictions being placed on our faith or any faith community. God bless us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Jesus, as you sent out the 70, you send us out in our lives as well to herald your presence to tell the world of your gracious gift of salvation. Help us to be obedient to your commands and faithful in our Christian journeys, that the world may meet you and experience your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, last week in Galatians we read of the sins of anger, quarrels, dissensions, and factions, sins which many people in our country, too often including us, seem intent upon committing. Rather, let us listen to you, Jesus, and your commands for us to love one another. Help us to be a part of working to bring peace, share forgiveness, and show true compassion and empathy in our society. Help our leaders, elected or appointed, to remember that they are called to be servants of the people rather than wielders of power for power's sake. Correct, correct them where they are wrong, and strengthen them when they are right. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of healing, we lift, up to you, we lift up to you all who are sick, living with a health condition, fighting a disease, or wrestling with emotional or mental health. We specifically ask for health for Juanita, Amy, Karen, Chris, Bill, and all whom we hold in our hearts who need your healing presence. And we ask that you give to all who are grieving the death of a dear one, your solace in their sorrow, and peace on their journey. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Please walk with your people as we try to live lives that can bless the world and its people. Lead us into our days, O Savior, as we try to live lives of active love and living love in our obedient words and actions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give to you, O God, all of these for whom we pray, trusting in your grace and mercy. Amen. Let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We like to take time occasionally to share uh, with you, the, a celebration of our ministry here at church, as well as other happenings. And this week, I just want to share with you celebration of the first renewal of our um, church office suite uh, since it was built back in the mid-80s. So it's been 40-some years. Uh, the monies used were taken from memorials and uh, designated funds so that... Um, the front office staff are able to have new desks and workspace and 
the office uh, was able to be recarpeted and painted. Um, so if you want, you can stop in if you're in the building and take a look. And then as far as announcements, um, just want to invite you, if you ever are in the area, to service at 8, 9, or 10.30. And once the school season starts again, we have an adult learning called Connect that takes place at uh, 10 o'clock on Sunday mornings. And then, of course, there are always uh, children and youth activities Sunday and Wednesdays. Um, if you'd like to get in contact with us or see what's happening here at Our Saviors, please go to www.osel.org and uh, you can um, take a look at our church and as well as uh, find our contact information to get in touch with us. At this time, I'd like to share with you the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord through serving your neighbor. Amen. Thanks for joining us today, and we welcome you back anytime. Bye-bye. God of justice, save you too. Came to rescue the weak and the poor Chose to serve and not be served Jesus, you have called us Freely we've received now Freely we will give, we must go to feed the hungry, stand beside the broken, we must go, stepping forward, keep us from just seeing, move us into action, we must go.
Into action, we must go. 